Hello everyone and welcome back to this new lecture on subqueries. As you can see now we have started moving towards the advanced topics of SQL and subqueries is one of them. It is very important to have a fundamental understanding on subqueries to become an efficient SQL programmer. So without any further delay let's get started with today's topic. Within this lecture, I'm going to use this payment table, which is a part of our DVD rental database. If I'll select and hit execute, this table contains all these informations like payment ID, customer ID, staff ID, rental ID, etc. And now let's try to have a look on an SQL query where we are utilizing subqueries inside it. Pay attention to this SQL statement. It says select everything from the payment table where the amount should be greater than and over here within the parenthesis we are not passing in any concrete value like 50, 100 or 200. Instead we are passing the entire SQL statement that will calculate the value for us to which we want to compare the amount for each and every record. And this is how usually a subquery looks like. So SQL is going to execute this piece of code first that we are passing within the parenthesis. So let's try to execute this particular code and see what value it is giving to us. So I'm going to select this, select the average amount for payment table. And as we can see, the average payment amount is somewhere around 4.2, which means over here I'm saying that give me all the records where the amount should be greater than the average amount that is 4.2 at the moment. Now, what is the reason that we are not using the concrete value over here as in 4 or 5? Because let's say you are working in an organization where within a specific table, the records get keep on adding each and every day. In that case, the average amount will be a value that will keep on changing week on week, day by day. And this is why we cannot be assured at any given point of time that what shall be the average amount for the table. Hence, we are using this subquery. And at any given time, whenever we perform this, it will return us the current average amount which we are comparing in our main SQL code. So I'll select this and hit execute and I'll get to see all those records within this final output where the value for the amount column will be greater than 4.2. And this was an example for a single level subquery. How come? Because this subquery is returning us a value that has only one row and one column. Let's have a look again. If I'll select and execute it, this subquery is not returning me multiple values. It has only one row and one column. And I'm comparing my main SQL query with this particular value over here. And this is why we call it a single level subquery. Moving on, let's try to go ahead and have an example of a multi-level subquery. So within this SQL code, I'm using this statement as a subquery. So let's try to execute it separately to see what value it is returning to us. By the way, we are saying that select all the distinct customer ID, all the unique customer IDs from the payment table, then order it by the customer ID itself in descending order, which means the customer ID with the highest number should be coming on the top. And then we are trying to fetch the top five records. So if I'll select and hit execute, I'll get top 5 customer IDs in descending order from the main payment table. And as you can see, this particular subquery is not returning us a single value. It is returning us 5 different values. Now let's go ahead and try to understand the main subquery SQL statement. So here I am saying select everything from the payment table where the customer ID in which means should belong to the output coming from this subquery. That is returning us these values. So if I'll select and execute this, we will get to see all those records where the customer ID belongs to those top five customer IDs in descending order. And this was an example for a multi-level subquery. Now let's try to solve a given problem with the help of a subquery SQL statement. And the problem statement given to us is that we need to group by this data, by this customer ID column. And after grouping by each and every customer ID, I need to calculate the sum of amount for each and every customer ID. And in the final output, I will include only those customers whose sum of ID is greater than the sum of ID for this customer, customer ID 341. So first, let's try to calculate the sum of amount for this customer so that we can write our final SQL query. So over here in this statement, I'm saying select the customer ID and their sum of amount from the payment table where the customer ID should be equals to this. I'm not keeping it 
covered with inverted commas because this is an integer data type not a string and then I need to group by customer ID. If you remember from the group by lecture, the column name we are passing into the group by clause, we also need to include the same in the select statement as well. So if I'll select and execute this code, it should give us the sum of amount for customer ID number 341. And there we go. So in the final SQL code, we want to fetch the sum of amount for all those customer IDs having a sum of amount greater than this value which is 103 and this is going to be our final code or you can see the solution for the given problem. So I am saying select all the customer ID and their sum of amount from the payment table using a group by with the same customer ID column that I am using in the select statement and then pay attention over here I am not saying where I am using this having clause because we are checking the condition for this aggregated data we are checking the condition not for amount the sum of amount and this is why we are using having not where so we need the customer IDs having a sum of amount greater than the sum of amount for the customer ID 341 and if we select this entire code and hit execute then you will see for all the customer IDs the sum of amount will be greater than 103. You can try it by yourself using the same code and you will get the same output. And that was all about today's lecture. In case you found this slightly complicated or overwhelming, then watching this lecture one more time will set your ideas absolutely clear. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like below. Let us know your views if you are liking this SQL tutorial for data science. What are the things that you are liking or you want us to improve? Drop your feedback in the comment section and we would love to go through it to enhance the tutorial quality. Thank you very much for your time today. See you in the next lecture.